here's what I figured out. You can run the freezer, the fan, the TV, the iron all at the same time for as long as it takes for the iron to kick back on. Um, typically, the inverters turn themselves off when they detect that the load is going to cause the voltage to drop too low. Um, or even typically if the, the um, uh, amount of watts that it can create is over. But it, it, neither one happened. Um, it's a 6,000 watt inverter and that's 1,200 watt. And uh, obviously that's peak here and that's, that's normal here. But um, this produces still 3,500 watts pure sine wave. Um, my theory of why my inverters, both of them, shut off. Um, I actually lost my phone for a second um, because basically I'm plugged into it and I have a bad battery in my phone that I need to replace. But um, the power turned off to both. And my battery voltage was normal. My amperage was normal. Um, I mean, I was only pulling about 100 amps. My gauge of wire, I have did the math on that, and I can pull about 300 amps, um, you know, with low resistance. And uh, so far, this is what I've come up with. Um, I don't take long to figure things out. But here, if you'll look at my configuration here, I have my 3,500 watt, 6,000 watt peak inverter in parallel to the same circuit that my 1,200 watt is going to. And they are both going through 4 gauge wire. There's my problem. I believe I found out that my inverters are going to only be limited by the gauge of my wire that's going to it because it's only going to provide so many amps and mean that you're providing so much power. You need a high amount of amperage um, to go through. So at some point today, I'm going to use the extra battery cable I have over here and I'm going to build um, battery cables for my 6,000 watt that connect directly to the bus bar through, and I'm going to have it, of course, fused, but I'm going to run it straight over to there um, so that I'm not running in parallel to that. Uh, worst thing I could do is basically try to get 100 amps or 105 amps to go through a wire that's only rated to handle 60 because I could cause a fire. And I'm glad that I was here to witness this because basically the the wiring did get hot. They didn't get to a point where they would melt, but they basically I guess the inverters have sensors built in, and they realized that there was so much resistance in the line that something had to be going wrong, and they turned themselves off. So um, very good, very safe. I love these things. Um, I usually don't like things that come straight from China, but this inverter here is great. The uh, charge controller I had was a piece of crap. But um, th this thing right here, these things are good. Both are doing their job pretty well. Anyway, um, I'm going to go real quick over my checklist. I'm getting ice. Uh, again, I'm getting sandwich meat. I'm going to buy a little grill for 30 bucks. I've been eye eyeing out. It's a little Coleman um, grill. Um, I don't want to run everything off of my uh, battery bank. I can cook, obviously. If I can heat up a iron and run a freezer, I can cook with a George Foreman on this uh, this bank. Actually, I want to test that. I can cook with it, um, obviously. The only issue right now is if I hook it up to the bank as it is, I'm going to pull so much power. Um, trying to heat the element that it's going to turn my inverter off because of the fact that the gauge of wire is not thick enough to run. Um, run both things. So anyway, I, I think I'm being a lot of, of uh, I'm being long-winded in a lot of my comments. So I'm gonna try to be quiet. I just want you guys to see where my mind um, takes me as I go through this um, week without being on the grid and being in an emergency situation.